Hello travelers and welcome to Adventures in Myth and History. In this video, I want to explain what myth is within the context of mythology. My Patreon supporters can download the learning guide associated with this video from my Patreon page at the link above. Most people today see myths as just false stories. Stories told by anyone trying to convince people of something that isn't true. Mythology is often combined with folklore and ritualistic practices, and then there's the legend versus myth challenge. The problem we have with defining myth is that there is no single definition that suits all mythographers. Further, mythology can have very subtle differences from legend and folklore. So, how do we come up with definitions for myth and mythology? What we need is a general definition of myth. Something that directionally conveys how we place myth into historical and scientific contexts without placing too many restrictions on how we see myths and how we use them. I believe Joshua Mark's definition is a good basic view of mythology without restricting it too much. Myths are a part of every culture in the world and are used to explain natural phenomena, where people came from, and how their civilization developed and why things happen as they do. At their most basic level, myths comfort by giving a sense of order and meaning to what can sometimes seem a chaotic world. One thing to remember is that a myth, a single myth, does not comprehensively define the world for an entire culture, a population that passes down learning from one generation to the next about the universe, society, and how to function in both. Instead, the culture's mythological corpus, the entire collection of a culture's myths, provides a complete picture. When we look at a culture's myths, it's essential to understand them from the perspective of the culture that lived through them, through their worldview. We can't accurately understand a culture if we view the stories through our own worldviews, our own set of moral norms, and our own religious beliefs. Finally, we must understand that older cultures' myths replace science in explaining the world and our place in it. In many cases, the inclusion of their scientific view of the world might show up in a myth about how to act in the world pushing some contemporary readers immediately to dismiss the entire story. This is a mistake. Science is not always the critical element of a myth. Instead, the story teaches about something completely different, some crucial look at the world through the storyteller's eyes. Consequently, it's essential not to simply dismiss a myth because it claims the world rests on the back of a turtle. We can classify myths as etiological or creation, historical or psychological. Creation myths, also known as cosmogonic myths, explain the beginnings of the universe and the earth, including humans. There are many ways to categorize creation stories, but I use one created by the late Mircha Eliade, an historian and mythographer and former professor at the University of Chicago, which consists of five elements. First, in some creation myths, a deity creates the cosmos from nothing, ex nihilo. In others, known as earth diver stories, a deity sends an animal beneath the all-encompassing waters to retrieve a handful of dirt from which the land is created. Some myths tell of dividing a single androgynous being into male and female. These two parts then mate, and their union begins creation. In still other creation stories, like that of the Norse, a being is dismembered, with different parts making up various elements of creation. Another is the emergence type, common to Native American myths, in which human-like creatures must travel through various worlds before reaching ours. Historical myths refer to people and events that likely actually existed. Still, some or most of the stories told about them are greatly embellished, making them unclear or just plain wrong. The Trojan War, as told by Homer, is an example of a historical myth. Based on archaeological findings, it's likely this war happened. Still, 
The telling of the story is based on Greek myth, and the taking of Helen with Aphrodite's help, the result of Paris choosing Aphrodite as the most beautiful of three goddesses, is obviously a myth. Examples of myths about people include those surrounding Billy the Kid, Joan of Arc, and King Arthur. James Bonnet describes the mythicizing process in this way. It began with a real or imagined incident or event that was worth repeating. Something so intriguing that we were compelled to repeat it. It was passed along by word of mouth from person to person and from generation to generation until it had been told and retold millions of times and existed in a hundred different versions around the world. Humans tend to make up stories or parts of stories to support their views of their clan, culture, and nation. These additions to actual historical events and people can become legends, like Washington cutting down the cherry tree, that teach proper behavior, justify their worldview, and rationalize how they treat outsiders, those not falling within their cultural, religious, and national boundaries. Throughout my videos, I'll treat legends as historical myths to simplify applying them to historical entities. Every time a story is told, it's likely to change a little. Even ancient oral storytellers change their stories based on the audience, a culture consisting within a specific time and place. This is why written myths, myths frozen in time, are just one version of a story, one that might be quite different from the original telling. It is also why one written version might differ from another, depending on when, how, and by whom the story was told to the writer. Psychological myths describe emotions and teach lessons. They often include stories of the journey of heroes, journeys in which a hero must come to face to face not only with dangers, but also with himself. Examples of psychological myths include those surrounding Heracles, Achilles, and Odysseus. These myths also include stories of events that have subplots and heroes, like Homer's Iliad and the Mahabharata, a work that includes the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a story in which Krishna, a personification of the Hindu god Vishnu, bolsters the hero Arjuna when he begins to doubt himself. Note that a single story can fall into more than one of our three classifications. Myths are not just stuff of the ancient world. All cultures throughout history, including those existing today, create and believe in creation, historical, and psychological stories. However, these stories are not myths to everyone. For example, a story might have a significant religious significance, a religious truth to some, while yet being seen as a myth by others. I want to pause for a moment and clarify something. My intent in this or any other of my videos is not to downplay or any religious belief. I believe we all need a spiritual path, a path relevant to each individual. No path is more or less important than any other. Having said this, let's look at four stories many people today accept. The first two are from the book of Genesis. An example of a creation story, actually two different creation stories, exists at the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the first chapter, God created the heavens and the earth from nothing. He then proceeded to the elements of the heavens and the earth, the flora, and then all non-human animals. Finally, he made both man and woman, made them at the same time. In chapter 2, God created man, then made the animals, and finally created woman with a rib from Adam. This is a reflection of creation myths in which body parts are used to create other entities. David Bakaboy, professor in Bible and Jewish studies at Utah State University, asserts that the differences in structure and literary form indicate that the two chapters were written by two different writers with different agendas. So which is correct? Are either an accurate representation of creation, or are both stories used by people of the book? to explain how things came to be without the benefit of science. We'll return to this topic in a future video. 
Now, the following two stories are related to explaining the world without science. Scientific creationism has four primary tenets. The Earth is young and the tens of thousands of years old, not billions. Humans were specially created by a supernatural being. Paleontologists are working from erroneous testing or observation of fossils. And public schools should teach scientific creationism alongside evolution because they're both scientific interpretations. Intelligent design differs from scientific creationism in a couple of ways. First, adherents believe that each is ancient and that species change in some ways over time. However, intelligent design adherents contend that some systems, like humans, are so complex they couldn't have possibly wholly evolved on their own over time. In other words, a deity must have had a hand in their creation. Scientific creationism and intelligent design are stories with claims that cannot be tested. Science, on the other hand, requires that any hypothesis or set of hypotheses be capable of testing, of being able to be falsified. We cannot do that with creationism and intelligent design, so they're not science. Instead, they're myths or stories developed to support worldviews that contradict the scientific findings of science and that cannot themselves be scientifically confirmed or found false. Well, that's it for this video. As you can see, the topics we'll discuss in this channel will analyze both ancient and current beliefs. There's no correct answer for most of what we cover when we do this. Instead, we explore and come to tentative conclusions based on what we learn while being open to changing our beliefs when additional information becomes available. Please subscribe if you learned something or were challenged by what I covered in this video. If you want to be able to engage in in-depth discussions about the video topics and download the guides associated with the videos, while also supporting the production of these videos, please become a member of my Patreon page. Until next time, keep an open mind.